On the morning of the 16th of March 2011, a jerga was convened at Datakhel in North Waziristan to debate the ownership of a local chromite mine. A jerga is a traditional community gathering that meets to resolve disputes. Reportedly at issue was the method of payment of 8.8 .8 million rupees, approximately 100,000 US dollars, for the mining rights. This particular meeting took place in an open field in the vicinity of the Nomada bus station in Datakhel's Bazaar. The jerga lasted two days. It consisted of two large adjacent circles of men seated on the ground. These discussion circles were positioned 3.6 metres apart, according to one of the witnesses. On the first day of the meeting, a US drone struck in the vicinity of Datakhel, killing four to five people. Very little is known about this strike. At approximately 10.45 on the morning of the second day, missiles fired from a loitering US drone struck one of the two Jerga circles. Upwards of 43 civilians were immediately killed. The convening of the Jerga had been authorized by the Pakistani military 10 days previously and was thus an officially sanctioned meeting. Members of the local tribal police were also present. After locating the site of the Jerga in Datakhel, we identified key structures mentioned in witness statements. The field where the Jerga convened is near many shops and other businesses and a parking area used by bazaar visitors. Using satellite images acquired from the 23rd of January 2011 and the 5th of April 2011, we were able to identify changes that had taken place in the environment of Datakal. In the images, we can see an open area capable of accommodating 40 to 50 people, bounded by perimeter structures. This area is consistent with eyewitness reports. As is local tradition, the Jirga was held in a large open space near the Datakel Bazaar. Detailed examination of the after image indicates surface disturbance and discoloration in the area determined to be the location of the strike. Further examination indicates the presence of two possible impact craters, approximately 3.6 metres apart, another spatial feature supported by witness declarations. I visited the place where Dean Mohammed was killed by drone missile 10 days after the strike. There was nothing left but a massive crater at the site where the Jirga was convened. The blast radius of a Hellfire missile is anywhere up to 20 meters. As the Jirga was held in an open area, there would have been little to absorb the explosion's force. This is borne out by a survivor's description of being thrown seven meters from where they were sitting. Another witness, who arrived after the strike, describes the aftermath of such munitions being used on a group of people. When I reached that place, the situation was really very bad. There were still people lying around injured. The tribal elders, who had been killed in the strike, could not be identified, because there were body parts strewn about. The smell was awful. This diagram provides a detailed understanding of the potential explosive force of the multiple Hellfire missiles that struck the Jirga. As indicated, the force would have also been intensified in the areas of overlap between the two points of impact from the missiles. This would have dramatically increased the capacity for killing and maiming Jirga attendees. What I saw when I got off at the bus station near Datakel Bazaar was a horrible sight to see. I immediately saw flames in and around the station. Women and children at the station were saying that there had been a drone strike and the fires spread after the strike. The fires burned in Datakel for two days straight. The attack on the Jirga was roundly condemned by Pakistan's president, prime minister and the head of the army.